guys, it's Kong Zombies, and today I'm going to show you how to use Exploit Broadcaster. I'm going to show you the basics and just how to record and use the best settings possible. So first, I'm going to show you actually how to record. So if you go to Tools and you want to start setting up your hotkeys for starting and stopping recordings, I already have mine there, but when you first open up Exploit, these two options are not going to be there at all. For some reason, I don't know why that happens, but... What you're going to have to do to get those working is you're going to have to click broadcast and then you're going to click local recording. Now, I'm not going to do that because I'm recording with OBS. So as soon as you do that, it's going to show up the hotkeys for starting and stopping your recording. So it's pretty simple and then you can change them around as soon as you get the hotkeys up. So the best thing about XSplit is the scene things right here similar to OBS you can add all these different types of capturing devices media file you can add all that kind of stuff here for screen capture it's really really easy let's just say I wanted to record like Google Chrome or something for a web browser game I don't know I would add click add and then screen capture and then there would be a red line over where it wants to record and then I click that and then bam it comes up right here I can resize it to whatever and then I can start recording with whatever hotkey I have or even going back up here and clicking local recording it's really simple and then you can just click remove or if you want to change around scenes say you have black ops 3 open but at the same time you want to switch scenes to Google Chrome all you'd have to do is click the scene button and then you click add screen capture and then whatever you want here is gonna be in your second scene obviously I don't have anything in here and then you can click back here and then you can go back to your first scene you can even have transitions for like when your scenes are moving around it's really really simple that's why I use exploit a lot now to set up your resolution settings you go up here resolution it's gonna be locked at 720p for you guys but I have a license so I can set it to 1080p at 60 frames the max for a no license is 30 frames uh, and that's pretty much it for that so the best thing about XSplit is that the file size is super low that's why I tend to use it a lot OBS and you know some other softwares DXtory just loads your computer with a huge file size so that's why I never use it so here, I'll just go into general settings for you guys so you can see what I kind of use. So, general, I just kind of keep this normal. All this kind of stuff you probably don't need to worry about. Audio, you're going to want your microphone. If, say, you have a webcam or something, it's probably going to automatically click webcam for you. So, you want to go down to where you have your headset at. So, I would just leave the rest of this normal unless you wanted to change your system sound. Say you have like uh, some audio system in your TV and you wanted to switch to that or something. I don't know. Whatever. Or it's not playing through your headphones or something. Just click whatever you want to have there. So, hotkeys. I mean, you can change this to whatever. I usually have start and stop to F9 and then pausing to F10, although I never use F10. So, all this stuff is pretty cool. I mean, you have a lot of options here for hotkeys, toggling mic, toggling speaker, all that. Or you can change it to shift control or alt or none. I actually use none because I think that's kind of weird to have to do all that. Accounts. Now, this is for you if you have a YouTube account and you want to just publish this straight to YouTube, then uh, XSplit can do that for you really easily. You can just authenticate your account here and then it'll just open for you. And then you can also have Facebook and Twitter, but usually YouTube I use. Profile I'm not going to worry about, but all this here, enable native flash and browser audio control, and all this crap I also do not mess with, unless you want to mess with GPU anti-aliasing, which you may or may not want to mess with depending on how good of quality your video is. Normally I just leave this at none because the video quality is perfect for me. So I think that's about it for the basics. If you need any help with anything else, let me know in the comments down below. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching and peace.